Hey guys, welcome back. So today I want to talk to you about AR-15s. I don't talk about these rifles a whole lot on the channel, and it's not because I don't enjoy or like the rifles. As a matter of fact, I love the AR-15. I think it's one of the most reliable, accurate, best military service rifles in modern history. And to support that, just look at the U.S. military. The U.S. military has used the M16, or some variation thereof, since the 1960s. If it was a piece of junk, the U.S. military wouldn't still be using it. As a matter of fact, the Army has tried to replace the gun at least three times I'm aware of, and each time they've taken a look at what was available in the marketplace, compared it to the current generation of M16 that they had, and came to the conclusion that none of the products being offered really were demonstrably better than the M16, so they've canceled all the programs. I suspect the M16 will probably still be in service by the time I get old and die. The gun is just that good. So, yes, I love the AR-15. It's America's rifle, and I have a whole bunch of them in my collection. I just don't talk about them a whole lot because I don't know, guys, I've been shooting the thing since the mid-80s. My very first centerfire rifle was an AR-15. I showed you guys that rifle recently in a recent video. I love it. It's ergonomic. It's comfortable. It's very familiar to me, but it just seems old. So my attention has kind of wandered off over the last 8, 10 years to things like AKs and Tavors and things other than the AR-15. But it hasn't stopped me from acquiring them or shooting them, just not on camera. So recently, I got the urge to acquire another AR-15. I was just taking a look at what I had in my collection, and I thought I could change a few things and get a rifle that would perhaps be a little bit more suitable to my current shooting style. And if you come into the store in Valparaiso, Indiana, it's Copper Custom, if you come into our store and you talk to me and you take a look at one whole wall that's dedicated to AR-15s, and if you engage me in conversation, you'll hear me say, I don't build parts guns. I don't go out and buy a bolt from this supplier, a carrier from this supplier, an upper from this guy, and a lower from this guy, a stock from this guy, or whatever. I don't think I've ever done that in my entire life. I typically buy complete rifles, or in the case of this rifle, I've gone to a specific company, which is BCM, and picked from products that they offer to put my gun together. And the reason I do that is because if you go to a quality manufacturer, every, everything is designed and tested to work together and it will be as reliable as an AR-15 can possibly be. And if you wanna see a demonstration of just how reliable a good mil-spec AR-15 can be from a quality reputable manufacturer, I'm sorry, I got a bug that keeps going in my ear, go check out my AR-15 uh, reliability test. It's incredible what I do to that Colt, which is a 6920, and it continues to work. The AR-15 is definitely a reliable rifle. So I always go to uh, a company like BCM or Colt, FN, uh, LWRC, H&K, Wyndham Weaponry. These are all AR-15s I've purchased in the last few years, but um, BCM is my current favorite. For many years, I was a Colt guy. Every AR-15 that I bought would typically, I'd start looking at Colts and maybe work my way off into something else that may be new and catch my eye. But um, that had changed in the last four or five years since I discovered BCMs and started shooting them, testing them, and buying them. I've come to the conclusion that BCM is probably one of the best, if not the best, uh, AR-15 on the market if you take all things into consideration. The overall quality, which is through the roof, the price, and options that are available for it. So I've become something of a BCM fan. I have several of their rifles, and you'll see them more on the channel. So this is the rifle that I put together from parts that we had at Copper Custom. We do sell BCM rifles there. So this EGA lower has been hanging on the wall driving me nuts forever. I keep wanting to buy one and uh, put it together into a build, and that's what I ultimately did with this rifle. So here you can see the Eagle Globe and Anchor. I know I've mentioned EGA in the past on the channel and in the comments, and folks have said, what's EGA stand for? Uh, the EGA is the, uh, is the emblem of the United States Marine Corps, and it stands for Eagle Globe and Anchor. So I have that on the lower. Then I went out and put a 15 inch KMR upper, which is their key mod aluminum rail on, on one of their BCM uppers. I, I put that KMR on here with a 16 inch pencil weight barrel. It's not the upgraded uh, cold hammer forged barrel. It is a standard button cut barrel, but it is chromed and it's a one and seven twist. And on the end of that, I put a hammer comp from Griffin Armament. So, I could have a very effective muzzle break, but also quickly attach my uh, favorite suppressor to the rifle, which is a Griffin Armament M4 SD2, which I'll break out here later in the video. So I have the 15-inch KMR 
alpha rail here. On that rail, I have these heat panels, these, this heat shielding, which just pops onto the key mods, which is also a product of BCM. And you can customize it, cut it to any length that you want, and wrap it around there so you get some heat protection on this aluminum rail. These barrels will pass heat very quickly to the aluminum handguard, so you either want a vertical grip or some sort of protection to get your hand away from that, that aluminum. And then I have a BCM hand stop on it. On the front here, I have an Enforce light. This is a 200 lumen light, and it's on a 45 degree mount. The hand stop, the BCM hand stop, is positioned in such a way that I can always go right here and hit the light with my thumb when I need it. And there's a little safety on the Enforce that you can put up so when you put it in the case, it doesn't actually hit the pressure switch and turn your light on and kill your batteries. Then moving back, let's go ahead and show you the backup sight since I have one here in the front as well, obviously. These are Magpul Pro sights, uh, backup sights. And um, I prefer these over the original Magpul polymer sights. I've broken several of the rear sights over the years. And so far, I've not been able to break these pros. So these little Magpul sights are definitely very nice. Coming back, I have the Trigicon MRO mounted on here. And I've become, I've warmed up a lot to this sight. And a lot of guys at Copper Custom are using them on their rifles. And again, people are really liking them. So I'm running a Trigicon MRO, red dot sight on here. It has a 2MOA dot. And you can adjust the brightness on the top. And here very soon, I will take one of these MROs out here in the next couple of weeks and beat the snot out of it on camera just to give you guys a demonstration of how durable these sights are. I have it mounted to the upper via a Midwest Industries quick detach mount. This is an absolute co-witness height mount and you can buy it in different heights. So you can do lower one third, which will set the sight up just a little bit higher, or you can do absolute co-witness, which allows you to see straight through the middle of the sight with your iron sights. And it is a QD mount. So you can push the button in and flip the lever and the mount comes right off the rifle. Now I like to use quick detach mounts on my red dot optics on my fighting rifles because if the site's going to fail you, if you invest in a quality site like an Aimpoint or a Trigicon, the chances of that site failing you are pretty low. You're, you're just as likely to have a weapons failure of some sort. The only thing that can really mess with the sights too much I found over the years in my use is that you can get them muddy or wet and not be able to cleanly see through them. And therefore, your only course of action really is to get the sight off the gun versus trying to see through the already defective sight or gunked up sight with your iron sights. So to use the irons, you're going to have to get the sight off the gun to go to irons. And so that's why I'm a big fan of QD mounts. And I don't really care so much about co-witness. I don't get wound up about it like some folks do. Um, everybody has their own preference. Me, I just don't really care as long as I have a QD mount. And then I just have these, these standard gunfighter grips and stocks on here that uh, BCM sells with pretty much every rifle these days. It has a gunfighter charging handle on it as well. And then finally, to tie this whole little ensemble up, my Savvy Sniper Sling. These slings are, are simply the best slings on the market, guys. Uh, I've, I've used a lot of slings over the years, and um, when I stumbled upon these, I was blown away by their simplicity and quality of construction. And since then, this has been about four or five years ago, uh, you can go back and see some of my videos when I first started using the slings. I've never found a better option. I literally have drawers full of old slings and old holsters that I've bought, tried to use, found out they didn't work for me, and just discarded them. The Savvy Sniper is the first adjustable sling I've ever used, I continue to use and continue to buy. I have them on every single one of my guns. Also, Lancer 5s. These are the magazines I've been using for the last couple of years. I started to move away from Magpul magazines because my older magazines that are now six, seven years old have started to fail me. The, I leave them loaded a lot, and I, like so many other people, take that little top cap off and throw it away because it's awkward. It's hard to get your magazine back into a pouch with it in place, all those things, but it's intended to be used with a fully loaded magazine. You clip it on the top, and it takes the pressure off the feed lips to preserve the lifespan of your magazine and to preserve reliability. Well, like I said, me and just about everybody else takes those things off and throws them because they're just awkward, easy to lose, and makes it impossible to use the magazine and pouches and things. Well, leaving those magazines loaded has slowly stretched the feed lips to the point where I'm starting to see failures in my oldest Magpul magazines now, uh, causing hard failures. So these Lancer 5s are something that I've gone to. I've, I have one or two of them, they're still loaded, have been loaded for a year or so. And every once in a while, I'll take it out and check it, make sure it still works, and so far it does. Um, these things have steel reinforced feed lips, and these are what I've moved over to because I don't have to worry so much so far um, with regards to them destroying themselves if I leave them fully loaded. 
So I put this rifle together and I've updated it to current you know, technology and, and configured it to my current style of shooting. And I'm just gonna run it this fall and what's left of the summer and this fall and just consider it as my new truck gun and travel gun. I, um, you know, there's no disputing that the AR-15 is reliable, accurate, well-made. Lots of uh, support for it by the third party uh, marketplace out there. You can get just about every accessory known to man, so much so that people jokingly call these Lego guns. I don't know, guys, I'm just kind of rediscovering the AR-15, even though I have a whole bunch of them, like I said, in my collection. So I'm gonna get this rifle sighted in this video, do a little bit of shooting with it, uh, show you guys how it works with this, this hammer comp, uh, with the M4 SD2 Griffin armament suppressor on it, and give you my some, you know, just some general thoughts about this rifle, and then I'll keep you guys updated in future videos as to what I'm doing with this gun and if I'm still using it. So I've talked long enough, chewed on your ear, let's get over to the range and do a little bit of shooting. All right, guys, we're about 50 yards back, and uh, we're gonna shoot at the Challenge Steel target down there. I am using some Freedom Munitions, 55 grain ammo. This is some of the new stuff. They also offer remanufactured ammo. It's very affordable, and I really enjoy shooting this stuff. It's good ammo. All right, got my Lancer 5 loaded up. Now this rifle has not been sighted in yet, so I'm gonna try to do that right now. I'm gonna start off at 50 yards and hope that this MRO is somewhat close to being on. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. All right, so it looks like it's a definitely high. Hit him in the uh, upper right shoulder. So center of mass hit by aiming down by his side. So it's on steel. Let's go ahead and make some adjustments here. That hammer comp is awesome. Zero, zero recoil. Just guessing here at the clicks, as I often do. <laughs> Some people count their clicks, not me. Who has time for that? All right, here we go. Look at that. Darn near perfect. Come down just a bit more. I think it's going to be pretty darn perfect now. Look how fast you can shoot this rifle and how flat that hammer comp keeps the muzzle on this thing. Locked open. So, that quick to get it on a man-sized target at 50 yards. <laughs> That's one highly effective muzzle break, guys. Now look at this thing smoking hot. You might be able to hear it sizzling on the microphone. But uh, this thing is extremely hot this afternoon, and I'm still able to get my hands on it with those BCM heat shields. So things are a very worthwhile investment. All right, guys. Getting situated back here at the 100 yard line, and just see how close my zero is on the rifle. I kind of crudely zeroed it at 50 yards just a few minutes ago. And now I'm gonna check that zero out here. All right, let's see how well that 50 yard zero is gonna hold. Hit him, looks like it hit him in the head. So it looks like it's left right's good, but um, looks like elevation's a bit off. Yep, hit him again. So, looks like it's a little bit high. I'm gonna bring it down. I know a lot of guys like using a 50 yard zero or 25 yard zero for everything. I don't necessarily. I like a 100 yard zero still. And just a little bit to the left. So let's bring it right a couple of clicks. Let's try it again. It's 
spot on. So looks like I've gotten it zeroed. Now one thing I'm going to try, this is a brand new M4 SD2 from Griffin Armament. And this works in conjunction with the hammer comp or any standard A2 birdcage. Just slides on. A little bit of carbon there. And then it uses the wrench flats for anti-rotation. All right, let's see if I maintain my zero at 100 yards with the suppressor in place. It's not uncommon for suppressor to cause the zero to shift. And uh, it's just a bonus if your suppressor doesn't cause that. So let's see what happens here. It's working, man. This is awesome. Spot on. All right. So there is my suppressor setup for my new BCM rifle. Now, the only other thing left to do is to take my Magpul Pros, use backup sights, and zero them to the dot. I always do that. So I'll zero my red dot sight first, and then I'll adjust my iron sights to put that dot right on the front post of the irons. Now, I like doing that, and most people would do that, but just think about it this way. If you get to a range, you get out to go shooting, whatever, and you just want to do a quick reality check, flip your iron sights up and see where they are in relationship to the dot. If everything's lined up, neither the red dot nor the iron sights have been messed with. If they're out of alignment, something's off, and it could be your red dot, it could be your iron sight, so you need to check that out before you go into harm's way or uh, start shooting for the afternoon, whatever. So it's just nice having two sights that are aligned together so you can use them to check the zero of each. All right, I'm gonna take my, my sunglasses off for this because my old man eyes don't work so well. So it looks like my rear sight needs to come over just a wee bit. All right, and that, my friends, on my last AR that these were on, it was way left, and now it's pretty much dead center in terms of how far left and right the rear sight goes in its travels. That pretty much looks like it's spot on. Let's check them. Take my red dot off. Put my glasses back on. Let's see if my old man eyes can use these iron sights. Yep. So there we go, guys. I zeroed my iron sights to my red dot scope or scope sight. Let's go ahead and put this back on. Make sure I get the same T slot. One last thing to check, confirm zero after taking the sight off and putting it back on. And that's it, guys. I'm pretty darn happy with this rifle so far. It's like uh, <laughs> getting back together with an old girlfriend. Not a crazy, like, call you all the time when you break up with her ex-girlfriend, but when you, maybe your first girlfriend that you miss a little bit, I don't, but, yeah, my wife's going to kill me. All right, guys, I'm going to wind things up this afternoon. It was uh, really fun getting out here and shooting this old yet new girl. Um, you know, it's just good to shoot AR-15s. Every time I do it, I walk away with a smile on my face. I've uh, always loved the rifles, and, um, you know, it feels good to be back in the saddle again, although it wasn't that long ago that I was... Uh, shooting an AR-15. You guys uh, probably remember the video that I posted a few weeks back of how I got into this video, which showcased my original very first AR-15, which I'm lucky enough to still own. But anyway, I'm going to run this thing through the rest of the summer into the fall, and probably when the snow flies, I'll come back and give you guys an update and just let you guys know what I've decided with regards to making this my new do-everything gun, truck gun, travel gun, whatever. And uh, like I said, I'll give you an update sometime this winter. If you guys have any questions about anything you've seen in the video, of course, you can ask those questions down below. I stick around for the first couple of days after a video goes live to try to answer those questions you guys may have. Also, if you'd like to support the Military Arms channel, the best possible way to do that, swing by and check us out over at Copper Custom. And if you haven't already, please be sure to check out Full30.com. That's Full30.com. We've taken all the web's best firearms content creators, brought them under one roof, and that is Full30.com. Thanks again for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you guys soon.